All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in once again to the Church Work and Fetch Podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Heke. Welcome to episode 168. It is Monday, November 7th. Um, and yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hope you guys have had an amazing week. Um, or amazing day, member, amazing evening, whatever time of day that you might be listening to this episode. Um, it has been an interesting week for me, and I'm going to talk about why. Um, but before you know, I go into this episode, it's definitely going to be an episode where you know, unfortunately for some people, second plan, it's not unfortunate. Um, but you know, I I talk about a lot of stuff that God's doing in my life, and I'm hoping that it can really be beneficial to you as well. I don't mean to talk about myself for the sake of just you know being. Um, con- like conceited or self-consumed, but I do believe that God is doing things in my life, and I'm hoping that you know a lot of you guys can learn from it as well. Um, that's kind of weird how I said like you know unfortunate for some people. Nobody has complained, by the way. I just said that. Um, but yeah, before I get to that, we got Bible study tonight. Hope to see everybody there, five thirty Pacific time. Um, the sign up is in the bio. The sign up is in the description. Make sure you sign up. Tell your friends to sign up. Today we're going to be talking about questioning God. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? You know, or maybe how we question God. Like, do we need to be careful in some ways? I definitely think it's an important topic for us to talk about because I'm sure a lot of us have been told you never question God. Don't question God. And like, I get why we were taught that. Um, I think that there's more to the conversation, and I'm hoping to have a great conversation with you all tonight. So um, it's a Google Meets link. Sign up. That link will get sent to you if it hasn't been sent to you already. Um, sign up is going to last until 4 p.m. Pacific time. Um, then we close it down, and then 5.30 p.m. we'll get everything um, started. So hope to see you guys tonight. And as for any other announcements, um, we've talked about you know the Poetry Jam in February 4th. I believe we're going to start auditions this week, and it's going to go until the end of the month. So that means that, you know, I'll I'll actually put the link in the description um, where you can um, submit your Poetry Jam auditions. We're going to have that in the fourth. We're going to like post a flyer and everything and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's going to come. But, you know, we're still working out the specific details before we like, you know, do everything with publicizing the uh, flyer for the event. But. As for right now, we're getting the auditions rolling. We know we're doing it on February 4th. We know we're doing it in Los Angeles um, and some other information that we have confirmed. And, you know, we got to confirm our people. Who's going to be the ones? You know what I'm saying? If if you have the gift of spoken word, um, then this is, you know, we definitely would, would love to see that on display at this event. And really, some people, it's not that they do spoken word, but it's just that they love to share their testimony of what God's doing in their lives. And then they just have a couple words rhyme. So... If that's you, we definitely would love, love, love for you to audition. And more than anything, whether you're performing or not, we would love to have you guys on February 4th in Los Angeles. That's a Saturday. Um, and we'll have more information about um, about that soon. But auditions, 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 videotape auditions. It does not have to be the audition for it doesn't have to be like the specific piece that you want to perform. Any audition that you've ever done, any thing that's been filmed of you doing spoken word you can send that in and that can be your submission so um the link will be in the description the link will be in the bio as well for on our instagram and i believe in our tiktok as well um so yeah that's that let's get to this episode guys um this might sound you know kind of you know kind of sad for some people but it's not it's not a sad thing at all um god has really 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 i've talked to you guys about how much he has been working on me this year ladies and gentlemen this has been a very challenging year um i'm smiling right now there have been times where i've been crying there's been times where i've been very stressed out um mourning and um it's been a very tough year but one thing that i can say without the shadow of a doubt is that i have seen the goodness of god i have seen his grace carry me throughout throughout all of these trials and tribulations and i can genuinely say i'm not even the same person that i was at the beginning of the year i knew i wouldn't be but I can definitely say November, you know, 2022, I'm better than I was yesterday. If anybody knew me in college, you don't know me anymore. I tell you, man, if you thought I was a Jesus freak in college, <laughs> yo, I got news for you, buddy. The past two years have been crazy. And I love Jesus even more than I did back then. I didn't even know that that was possible. Um, but, you know, that's just what's happening. And um, I'm going to say this. I'm actually going to be taking a break from this podcast um, this is going to be the first time I've ever taken an extended break from the podcast. Um, so I know that this is going to be really weird. 
But nevertheless, um, you know, something that was put on my heart is something I, I had to pray for as well. And, you know, I definitely believe that God's giving me that confirmation. So this is actually going to be the last episode um, for a while. Um, I think, and this is just me thinking, I, I think for the entire remainder of the year. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm listening. Whatever God wants is what he's going to get. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the last episode for a while. It's nothing bad. The podcast is not ending. Um, of course, everything that we do here, uh, we do it. And if God said it ends, then then that's one thing. But God has not told me anything like that. So this podcast is not ending. Uh, Unassociated isn't stopping. Like we're still doing everything like and I'm still here, but I'm not going to be doing church boy confessions for a while. I'm going to take a break. Um, yeah, you know, and if I could tell you why. I mean, it's been put on my heart and, you know, God has been molding me all year. And I think that he's going to continue doing so in the time where I step, I take this break. Um, I'm not accustomed to taking any break. I mean, the longest I've ever gone without um, actually, you know, publishing an episode was two weeks. And that was when my cousin passed away. Um, And I was just way too distraught to get behind this mic. So, yeah, this is definitely longer than two weeks. And, um, yeah, you know, I, I would definitely say this. You know, there are people, there are other platforms and other uh, podcasts that I would definitely recommend because I want you guys to continue to be getting that word in. Of course, we have our very own Create with Kendra, um, who is still, you know, going to be doing her thing. Um, of course, I know a lot of you might know about Just Different Boys, the Just Different Podcast. Um, I would definitely uh, look into them. Tony Evans is a great preacher. Um, who else is a great preacher? Um, an, a great, uh, I like listening to John Piper sometimes. Um, but yeah, you know, definitely don't just because you're not listening to this podcast every week, I I would definitely love you guys to continue to, you know, get that, that feeding in, you know what I'm saying? And, And feed your spirit with some other people. So, um, Nothing bad is happening. I, I want to be very clear. Nothing bad is happening. I'm not like super exhausted and oh, I just I need to break. It's really not that. I'm low key still don't exactly know what it is, but I know that this just it's been on my heart. All right, so um, yeah, you know what I'm saying. If I can kind of illuminate a bit on what's been going on in my life, I will say that it starts off with me having asked God to search me and know me. Like that, I think the psalmist said, search me and know me. And, you know, I've been asking God, like, you know, what is it in me that could possibly be keeping me from doing what you want me to do at a higher level? Um, And really, when you ask God to search you and know you, you're asking him to really, like, call you out. Like, you know what I'm saying? To a certain degree, you're asking, what is it in me that that, you know, like, search me, know me, like, look, look all through me. What is impure? Take it out. You know what I'm saying? And oh yeah, he did that. Yeah. He answered that prayer. And, um, you know, long story short, even though I'm going to go into the story in some type of way, shape or form, God has definitely shown what he wants to work on in me. And I'm at a place right now where this stuff that I, this mindset that I've had, it's not fully glorifying him. And, It's to the point where if he really wants to change this mindset, I'm not even sure this mindset has been so deeply rooted and consistent in my life that I'm even having to relearn how to perceive like reality and and live this life. Um, And I know that sounds so like (laughs) that sounds so vague and nuanced, but let's see how how specific I can get with this. I'm going to start off like this. And I had to write down some notes because like, I, I didn't want this to be so nuanced that you didn't understand what I was saying. Um, I'm going to tell you guys my biggest fear. And I've told people my biggest fear before. And I know we're not supposed to have fear and all that different stuff. But yeah, this is a fear that I've had. My biggest fear is dying, not dying, but dying before I have done everything that God has ordained me to do. That is my biggest fear. Um, and 
I used to like kind of wear this fear on my sleeve. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it sounds like a very honorable fear to have. Like, ah, oh, yes, I just want to make sure that I do everything that God asked me to do. And, you know, by the time I'm done and, and like, you know, I'm in my deathbed, I have peace just knowing that, you know what? I did everything I needed to do. I'm moving on. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, that, that, that was something that I thought was honorable. Um, until I really started, God really started to unpack that fear for me, right? Um, and this is going to be very transparent. I really do hope that it doesn't make you think differently of me. I get frustrated with um, doing unassociated sometimes in that I get scared when certain projects and certain things that we do doesn't meet my measure of success. And those things have gotten me so frustrated at multiple times to the points where I've wanted to quit and I've expressed my desire to stop doing this to God. Um, I told you guys, you know, in a, in a previous podcast episode about, you know, in 2020 where I was actually about to stop this stuff. I think I did. I don't know. <laughs> but God didn't let that happen, as you can see. And um, I would always, whenever a project didn't pan out or didn't meet my definition of success, I would, my fight or flight would turn on. And I would be so scared of my biggest fear that I would die. And the things that God asked me to do, I wouldn't accomplish them i believe that god is behind this company and and you know this organization this ministry and that this ministry is only going to go to a higher position like i believe that you know that's that's happening and i don't think that that's changed but in the meantime of just dreaming and envisioning this this plan that god has for this ministry and not seeing it meet that that benchmark that level of success at every category at every at every um point in time has caused me to have so much fear and has caused me to have so much anxiety so much frustration um and i'm gonna ask holy spirit to help me man um and you know that's what it's done is when I, when I started to realize, like, I guess this is when the Holy Spirit really started to show me myself is that, you know, if my biggest fear is that I should die and, you know, have done everything that God wanted me to do, if my biggest fear is not being able to do that, then it doesn't really make sense. And I'll explain, like, God help me. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I guess I'm a little uh, nervous to say it, but I'll just say it. It is what it is. If my biggest fear was actually just that I wanted to accomplish everything that God has ordained me to do in order to and before I die, then that doesn't really warrant any fear. Because I recognize that if God is the one that has created me and he's also given me the gifts and if I recognize that this ministry that I do is something that is supposed to honor him and ministries grow and, and promotion comes from him, then really my only focus should be on following God, right? And if my focus is on following God and I'm making sure that I'm following God, I'm surrendered to God, I'm, I'm doing whatever he asked me to do, I'm obedient, I'm submissive to him, then there really is nothing to fear because how can I miss God's destiny for me? If I'm just following him completely straight up 100%, I should have some peace in me at all times. If my biggest fear truly is dying without having accomplished everything that God wants me to accomplish. I should not have fear if I'm just doing everything that God asked me to do, because I can't miss God's plan in my life if I'm literally following him. But why is it? That I know, and I've asked God multiple times, am I not following you? Am I not following you? And and I get that, like, I, I am. I'm being faithful to it. But if I'm being faithful to it, I'm being submissive to him, I'm doing all the different stuff. 
I'm still anxious and I'm still frustrated and I'm still fearful and so on and so forth. And what the Holy Spirit had to tell me was that the reason why, you know, you're so anxious, even though you're following me, even though you're following God, is because this biggest fear is is a sham. It's not that my biggest fear was was, you know, making sure I accomplished all the things that God asked me to, because then I would just focus on everything that he asked me to do. And then I would die whenever he wanted me to die. And there would, I would have that peace. But what he started to uncover for me is that I had, I had a plan for myself that I was running parallel to his plan for me. And a lot of times I would conflate those two and act as if they were the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at a man that has pride. And you're looking at a man who told himself that his biggest fear is to make sure he does everything that God does before he goes to, you know, to heaven and before he dies. But in reality, I'm the insecure kid that grew up and has spent most of his life trying to redeem himself for the times where I've been overlooked and the times where I've been rejected, the times where I've been ignored and undervalued. I have a part of me that the reason I want things to be successful in my life is not because it's for the kingdom, but it's because I want to redeem myself for every failure that I have ever encountered. And that sounds so innocent to some people, but it's not innocent. It's prideful. And it's even worse that I lied to myself and I lied to other people and I lied. I guess you could say I lied to God in making even myself think that this was all about me serving God. No, that's a part of it. But what also has been a part of it is me either proving people wrong or proving people right it's about me making up for the years where nobody or at least the people that i idolize not nobody but the people that i idolize didn't really that's just a church boy kid over there that doesn't know anything you know a lot of that was in middle school. A lot of that was in high school, and I w- I would love to think that I didn't I, that I healed from those things already, of just being overlooked and rejected and 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 um, ignored and. But no, I, I've had a chip on my shoulder for a long time. I've wanted people to like me and adore me for as long as I could remember. Now, granted, I understand, you know, I think a lot more people in this world, especially as broken as this world is, would like me and adore me if I wasn't a Christian. But, you know, I had this goal for everyone to like me and love me and adore me within the range that I was comfortable. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I call it the redemption plan. That that was the plan that I had for myself. That yes, God called me to ministry and God called me to make an associate and God called me and I know that he has big plans for this ministry and for the people and for impact and so on and so forth. And that's God's plan. But then my plan, I I, I, I always carried it, the chip on my shoulder. I carried it and I carried that into ministry where it's about God's plan, but then it's also about making sure that I look good. It's about making sure that... Um, I redeem myself for every failure that I've ever had. Um, I'm at a point where I've talked to you guys about how God's delivered me from pornography and masturbation. You know, some people, they get delivered from something, from a sin that they've been doing for so long time, such a long time like I did. And then you get a little comfortable in thinking that, oh, man, well, I'm not dealing with that sin no more. I am good, but you are not good. No, you're not good. Because there is still room for growth. 
Ladies and gentlemen, when I sit behind this mic, I want, I need you to know that I am not better than you and I am not more holy than you. God is working on me. He is working on me. I'm a prideful person. Um, I'm a prideful person that has lied to himself. I'm a prideful person that sometimes I can be more concerned with how many people listened and how many people viewed and how many people came more than I'm concerned with how many people actually strengthened their relationship with Christ. Um, silly me for allowing, allowing that pride to persist. At the time, I didn't know it was there. But now I do know it's there. God has made that very clear. Um, and I'm excited for him removing it and him working me through it. And I'm sure that even after he works me through this, that is going to be another thing that he reveals to me, so on and so forth. And um, I'm excited to just continue to be more and more and more like Christ. Um, as you know, I was really, I, I it was kind of even hard for me to have devotion, my devotion time with God for a little bit when he started to reveal this to me, because when God started to reveal my sins to me, I started to feel like I was being attacked and I started to feel like God didn't like me and that God had a problem with me and that God was telling me to, you know, take a break because, um, you're messing up. It's like when the coach pulls you out the game. Wow. Um, but I'm thankful. But instead, I'm thankful, guys. I'm thankful because Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 to 11 talks to me about what it means when God chastises us. And it doesn't mean something bad. According to Hebrews chapter 12, it says, And you have forgotten, starting at verse 5, And you have forgotten the extortion which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are um, rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Excuse me. If you endure chastening, excuse me, God deals with you as his sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid res them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? For they indeed are a few days chastening, for they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them. But he, talking about God, for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. when my God chastens you and when my God calls out your sin, he's not doing so to make you feel bad about yourself. He's not doing so to make you distance yourself from him. He's not doing so to make you even not like him or make you think that he's mad at you. He's doing so because he chastens those that he loves. And no chastening seems like it feels good in the moment. But when you allow God to chasten you and to grow you and mature you, the Bible says 
that the fruits of righteousness are going to be bore in your life. The Bible says that he does it. He chastens us for our profit so we can be partakers in his holiness. God is in the business of making his children more holy. And he can't do that without first explaining to you how you are unholy. I hear people always complain about, oh, Christians always make you want to not like yourself because they call you sinners. No, 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 no. I understand that some people that are judgmental, hypocritical, call you sinners to your face, say you're going to hell because they don't care about your repentance. But not here. If I call you a sinner and if the Lord calls out your sin, it's not because he wants you to die being a sinner. It's not because he wants you to feel bad about yourself, but it is instead because he wants you to understand. Allow him to come in and change you allow him to make you holy allow him to do his thing it doesn't stop at just revealing your sin he wants to give you the remedy for that sin as well for your profit so you can be partakers in his holiness so he can have you with him for all of eternity that is the reason it's not because he hates you it's not because he's mad at you it's because he wants to make you better because he loves you you're his son you're his daughter he wants the best for you and he wants you to be the best version of yourself which is being the most like him that you could possibly be. <laughs> and he does that with the chastening. He does that with the rebukes. He does that. He does that. John 15. Jesus said that I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear fruit more fruit ladies and gentlemen i'm being pruned i don't know about you i'm gonna get a shirt that says pruned <laughs> if we made shirts called pruned would y'all buy it <laughs> hey we try to get these donations hey you know what i'm saying shoot oh. <laughs> but no nah, on a serious note man i'm being pruned we're being pruned man don't don't mistake being pruned for being bruised don't don't mistake being pruned. I'm really trying to find something to rhyme with that. But maybe I should just give up on that. But like don't mistake being pruned for God hating you. For God disliking you. Oh, God don't want to do with you. He wouldn't prune you if he didn't want anything to do with you. You know what he does to people he doesn't want to do with deal with? He cuts them off and throws them on the floor and burns them. At least that's what it says in the analogy, if you continue to read. John 15, all right? I'm not making that up. <laughs> God is not out here calling out people's sin because he just has a bone to pick with you and he, he tired of your mess and wooty wooty woo. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Mm. That's why we don't even like to correct each other no more because every time we call out sin, it's supposed to be disrespect. Every time we call out sin is judgmental. Every time we call out sin is hypocritical. Then now nobody even knows what sin is nowadays. Because nobody gets to call it out. If we call it out, then we're the enemy. If I say something to correct you, then you think I'm attacking you. You think that I'm that I hate you or something like that. Have you ever even just had a conversation with one of your friends? Whether they're believer or non-believer, it especially hurts when they're believer. And they say something that you know you should correct them on. But you don't correct them because you're because like it, it hurts you that they are thinking like that. But you know that if you say something just straight up like that, they won't be even be able to receive it. You know, I hate being in situations like that. But, um, you know, you ask the Holy Spirit to give you that opening and give you that courage, give you that instruction on when and where is a good time and how to do it is a good time. And you, you'd be obedient with that. Um, Yeah. Yeah, let me see if there's anything else I want to say. Um, you know, when I when I do these little episodes when I'm talking about myself, I really do hope that it doesn't change you guys' mind. Um, but I, I do need you guys to understand that I am a sinful human being that is being changed into an image more and more like Christ every day. Um, and I'm going from glory to glory. I'm not there yet, but you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be there. And, um, you know, this is going to be the last episode probably for the year. Um, I, you know, hey, 
You know what I'm saying? See y'all next year, second plan. <laughs> I'll see y'all at Bible study tonight. I'm, you know, I'm still, I'm still around. Um, but you know, definitely <clears throat> listen to other episodes. Listen to other episodes, man. Um, we got 168 of them, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure that <laughs> you, you have more than enough to, you know, hold you in that time. <laughs> 168 oh my gosh that's crazy <laughs> but yeah ah oh, i love you guys i really do man and i and i and yeah i love you guys i will see you guys soon <laughs> um yes yeah, it's, it's like one and a half months like six six weeks something like that i don't know we'll see but yeah i'll see y'all when i see y'all and um i love you guys have an amazing, amazing, amazing week. Peace. Oops, sorry. <laughs> we didn't pray. Hold on, hold on. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much, God, for um, this episode, Lord. Um, I'm all rattled, but I just I just pray, Father God, that you be with everyone that's listening to this episode, Lord. Um, that you bless them to have an amazing, amazing, amazing week oh god an amazing day and father lord as you have searched me and known me lord jesus i pray that you search them and know them and highlight the different part of their life that they need to improve on as well oh god <sighs> and i pray that you help us to submit ourselves and humble ourselves under your mighty hand to take correction to not think that your correction and your rebuking and your chastisement is a indicator of your hatred for us but instead we understand that it indicates your love for us that you want us to be uh to profit from this and be partakers in your holiness and to bear the fruits of righteousness oh god and that we shall do in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen i love you guys you guys have an amazing week and an amazing um time <laughs> peace Thank you.